After years of bowing his head, Jeff Bezos is finally able to speak up about his rocket engines. This is all in due part thanks to United Launch Alliance's first Vulcan Centaur rocket, completing a critical test firing of its Blue Origin built BE-4 main engines Wednesday night, clearing one of two remaining technical hurdles before the launcher is cleared for its inaugural flight later this year. But what did Jeff Bezos declare during his announcement, and how does this success affect Elon Musk's SpaceX. All this and more in today's episode of Great SpaceX. A Vulcan rocket fired its two BE-4 engines in a static fire test called the Flight Readiness Firing, or FRF, at 9.05 p.m. Eastern from Cape Canaveral Space Launch Complex 41. The engine start sequence started at T-4.88 seconds. ULA said in a statement an hour after the test, with the engines throttling up to their target level for two two seconds before shutting down, concluding the six-second test. The test went as planned. Nominal run. Tori Bruno, president and chief executive of ULA, tweeted moments after the test. This is a huge milestone. This is as close as you can come to launching a rocket without actually launching the rocket. Mark Peller, vice president of Vulcan Development at ULA, said on a company webcast shortly after the test. An hour later, the company announced United Launch Alliance successfully conducted a booster engine flight readiness firing, or FRF, at Cape Canaveral Space Force Station, Florida. The engines throttled up to the target level for two seconds and then powered down. They are more than 98% complete with the Vulcan qualification program, with the remaining items associated with the final Centaur 5 testing. The team is now reviewing the data from the systems involved in today's test and in in parallel, continuing with the Centaur 5 test stand anomaly investigation. Pending the data review and the investigation results, ULA will develop a plan for launch. The test exercised all the vehicle and ground systems up through the ignition of the engines, stopping just before releasing the rocket. It's our last major milestone on the path to launch, so a big accomplishment. Immediately, Jeff Bezos replied with this, Nothing sweeter in rocketry than the word nominal. Congrats to you, Tori, and the whole team. Bruno thanked Bezos and responded, Loved that BE-4 blew fire. Vulcan's BE-4 engines are manufactured by Bezos' aerospace company, Blue Origin. A big congrats to our partner, ULA launch on Vulcan rocket's flight readiness firing test. We're proud to be part of this milestone. Did you know that each BE-4 engine provides 550,000 pounds of thrust at 100% power level? Tweeted Blue Origin. The marriage between Blue Origin and ULA seems to have a happy ending after many years of hardship. The company has had a bumpy ride in trying to see its rocket fly for the first time. The highly anticipated debut of ULA's Vulcan Centaur was originally scheduled for May 4th. Two weeks before liftoff, however, a fiery explosion swept over the rocket's test stand at NASA's Marshall Space Flight Center in Alabama while engineers were pressurizing its upper stage. Previously, Vulcan's maiden flight had already been delayed several times, with ULA initially hoping to launch its rocket in 2020 and then again in 2022. The rocket's first stage is powered by two BE-4 engines built by Blue Origin, which were delivered more than four years past the deadline, contributing to the delay of Vulcan's inaugural flight. During its flight readiness test, the rocket didn't actually get off the ground. Instead, engineers loaded up the Vulcan Centaur rocket with fuel and fired up its twin booster BE-4 engines. The point of the test is to go through the launch countdown and procedures, sort of like a rehearsal for launch day to make sure everything goes according to plan. The Vulcan's rocket inaugural flight will be the first launch to use new methane-fueled BE-4 engines from Blue Origin, founded by billionaire Jeff Bezos. At full throttle, each BE-4 engine can generate about 550,000 pounds of thrust. Two of them will power each Vulcan core stage with zero, two, four, or six solid rocket boosters to add thrust in the first couple of minutes of flight. Once the test firing is complete, ULA will drain the rocket's propellant tanks and return the Vulcan Centaur to its hangar for inspections. 
Technicians will install two of the Northrop Grumman-built solid-fueled boosters and the payload shroud supplied by Beyond Gravity, formerly known as RUAG Space. ULA's ground teams will also inspect the Vulcan rocket and its engines after returning the vehicle to the hangar, and technicians may need to adjust or replace thermal blankets around the engines that could be singed by the test firing. ULA will also swap out single-use igniters on the BE-4 engines before moving forward with final launch preparations. In parallel with the preparations for the flight readiness firing, ULA engineers continue investigating a hydrogen explosion back in March that cut short a structural test of the Vulcan rocket Centaur upper stage at NASA's Marshall Space Flight Center in Huntsville, Alabama. The blast damaged the test stand and a Centaur upper stage test article. The Vulcan rocket will use a larger upgraded model of the Centaur upper stage currently flying on ULA's Atlas V rocket. If engineers determine determined they don't need to make any changes to the Centaur upper stage on the first Vulcan rocket, the test flight could take off this summer. In remarks last month, Bruno said the mission could delay until later this year if corrective actions are required on the Centaur. ULA is a 50-50 joint venture between Lockheed Martin and Boeing, which merged their Atlas and Delta rocket programs in 2006. The Vulcan rocket will fly in several configurations with varying numbers of strap-on solid rocket boosters and different and payload fairing sizes available on each flight, depending on mission requirements. Speaking of its purpose, ULA touted the Vulcan rocket in competition with SpaceX. The Vulcan Centaur is designed to lift 27.2 tons to low Earth orbit and 6.5 tons to geosynchronous orbit. In comparison, SpaceX's Falcon 9 can carry 23 tons to LEO and 8.3 tons to geosynchronous orbit. Vulcan will cost around $100 to $200 million per launch, depending on configuration. Meanwhile, SpaceX sells a commercial version of its Falcon 9 rocket for only $62 million, according to the company's website, although the price can climb to more than $90 million for military missions. A commercial version of the company's Falcon Heavy rocket has a list price of $90 million, but that apparently assumes all three core stages are recovered for reuse. That version of the rocket, according to the SpaceX website, can boost 8 metric tons or 17,600 pounds to geosynchronous transfer orbit. In the best case for ULA, if Vulcan goes into regular operation, it could potentially outperform Falcon 9 and Falcon Heavy on certain missions. However, we must remember that there is another wild card in the equation. SpaceX is building an even more powerful rocket known as the Starship, which is intended for eventual missions to Mars. SpaceX's fully reusable Starship slated to make its first orbital flight this year will likely launch at a fraction of the cost of NASA's in-development SLS rocket. NASA estimates that a mission with SLS will cost about $2 billion per launch, while SpaceX's CEO Elon Musk announced in a recent presentation that a Starship mission could cost a comparatively low $1 million. In short, as ULA prepares for Vulcan's first orbital flight, SpaceX's Starship is already one step ahead. And that concludes today's episode. Thank you so much for tuning in. If you enjoy what my team and I are doing, you can become a patron through our Patreon link in the description below. Otherwise, as always, this is Kevin from Great SpaceX, and we'll see you soon.